Cathedral House of Assembly versus a wheat belly community. House of Representatives passes bill to establish Nigeria Peace Corps. Fire outbreak in a retirement home in Germany kills poor people. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the unimpressed economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Details of the news, I am Friska Wonkwo. Adam State Governor Professor Chukuma Saludo has expressed sadness about the shocking news of the death of veteran Nollywood actor Mr. John Okafo, popularly known as Mr. Ibo, on Saturday, the 2nd of March, 2024. In a statement on behalf of the governor by his press secretary, Mr. Christian Aburume, Governor Saludo regretted that Mr. Okafo's passing has left a significant void in the Nigerian entertainment industry. The governor for record that the late actor's comedic genius, infectious laughter, and captivating screen presence brought joy and laughter to millions across the country and beyond. Governor Saluda noted that having acted in over 200 movies in his career, it is acknowledged that the immense contributions Mr. Okafo made to the growth and development of Nollywood and the creative industry will remain evergreen. The governor remarks that his dedication to his craft and his ability to connect with audiences of all ages cemented his place as a true legend of the industry. Governor Saluda, on behalf of the government and people of Anambra State, commiserate with Mr. Okafo's family, friends, and colleagues, including the Actors Guild of Nigeria, during during this difficult time. Recalling the immense threats and resilience the late actor demonstrated during his own challenges, the governor prayed that a spirit of perseverance in the face of adversity serves as an inspiration to all. Anambra State House of Assembly has expressed deep concern over the effects of crude oil exploration and thefts in the Wheat Bele community of Barakansu area by selling oil exploration and energy production companies, SIPCO, during an oversight visit to the community. The Chairman House Committee on Petroleum and Mineral Resources, Honorable Chidebele Ibemeka, said the visits provided an opportunity for legislators to witness firsthand the challenges faced by the community in the region and the operations of the company. House of Assembly correspondent Emmanuel Chibota completes the reports. During the visit, lawmakers were confronted with the stark reality of environmental degradation, pollution, and socio-economic hardships caused by oil exploration activities in Oguibele as residents shared their grievances, highlighting the adverse effects on their health, agriculture, and overall quality of life. Speaking, the committee chairman and member representing Njikoka Constituency 1, Honorable Ibemeka, voiced the Assembly's disappointment at the company's disregard for its financial obligations to the state government and explained that the company not only deprived the state of crucial revenue but also undermined its ability to provide essential services and corporate social responsibilities to the host community. From the base manager, we heard that they don't have any metric system to account for all the resources they are hydrocarbon. hydrocarbon they are drilling in our land. At the same time, we are privileged to see how they transport this uh, product outside our state through laying an underground pipe and as well having a badges without accounting system. And I think we have a we are going to go back and make our report to the government of Anambra State and the people of Anambra, as well as seeking for the interest of our people as the legislative assembly. The majority leader of the Anambra State House of Assembly, Honorable Ikenna Ofodeme, thanked Ndi Ogwibele for being supportive and calm, assuring them that the lawmakers resolved to initiate legislative measures aimed at promoting environmental protection and ensuring corporate accountability with the company in order to safeguard the interests of Anambra residents and preserve the state's natural resources for future generations. It is now visible to us that we need to go back and do the necessary using the legislative means and make sure that people living with this, within this area and the environment are protected. Fielding questions from the lawmakers, the base manager of SIPCO, Mr. Killian Matre, who said he joined the company two years ago, noted that over the years there has been exportation of crude oil and pure gas to Delta State before he joined the company, which has eight oil drilling sites in the state. You are not aware that when your company came to request that the people of Obibele and Oguanocha and as well as Anambreras grant you the permit to lay this pipe. 
but you have started and at the end of the meeting you were, the permit was not granted. No, but I am not aware of that. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It is not part of my pipe is not meant for our location at all. What are you going to transport through this pipe? The gas from Uno State. What of the gas from Anambra State? We are How not do you going from that side. Where do you the President General of Owebele Community, Mr. Sonde Madupue, noted that the impact of activities of the company had resulted in erosion, which according to him is already sacking homesteads while oil spillage had contaminated the water bodies, which in turn made their farmlands unproductive and aquatic life unsustainable. On his part, Mr. Emmanuel Anene from Ogwibele said the company has refused to fulfill its corporate social responsibility to the community. On 29 February 2024, the company sought approval. The company sought approval through a sister agency to lay 18 inches pipe from Imo State through Anambra to Delta State. But during the oversight, it was discovered that the company had been laying pipes without any approval. From Ogwibele, Emmanuel Shibata for ABS News. Justice Thabo Anieto of High Course 3, sitting at Utwacha in Anambra East Local Council Area of Anambra State on the 1st of March 2024, and suit number OT slash 232 slash 2023, restored the leadership of the National Executive Committee of Ogwari in Subway, led by Comrade Thabo Ubi Ezazu, as the authentic National Chairman of Ogwari in Subway, to 19th of August 2025, when his tenure will expire. This followed an originating summons filed by the plaintiffs, Barrister Emeka Mokwe, legal advisor of Ogwari in Sube, and Comrade Thabo Obi Ezazu on December 2nd, 2023, seeking an interpretation of Ogwari constitution as whether it was lawful and constitutional for Ogwari village in Sube to conduct a fresh election while the tenure of the current executive committee, led by Comrade Thabo Obi Ezazu, has not expired. The plaintiffs sued the seven Diobala Ogwari and the chairman of the electoral committee as defendants also seeking another mandatory injunction restraining them from conducting fresh election pending the hearing and determination of the substantive suit. After dissecting the affidavit and counter affidavits by both plaintiffs and defendants, court held that there was no valid election held. Hence, the election allegedly conducted on December 16, 2023, while this suit was pending, was illegal, ineffective, and without any basis. The court also ordered that a PECOM plaintiff, Comrade Thabo Obi Ezazu, continue in office with the members of the Executive Committee of Ogwari in Subway until their tenure expires on the 19th of August, 2025. It holds that any other Executive Committee of Ogwari in Subway, apart from the one led by Comrade Thabo or be is as it remains illegal and ineffective. Ubudioka village, Oka, displayed its rich ancestral heritage during the Founders' Day celebration held at Nganagu Deity Shrine, Oka. As a custodian of the deity, Chief Sochukumosu performed the spiritual rites during the event, which adherents from far and near came to pay homage. Correspondent Kenechuku Chukudi tells us more. The atmosphere at the shrine was festive with cooking and dancing by individuals and groups who arrived the place for the celebration. After performing the spiritual rites and receiving those who came with their gifts to pay homage and offer prayers, the custodian of the deity, Chief Ngusu, explained that the deity came through Nwadioka from Abom, who came to heal Oka people who had infection after the Ibu Ichi facial markings and healed through the deity. Aroshi Ngenagobo, Aroshi Dioka Diwebia, Bata Ngoya no Mudioka Obunese. Omudioka in Abubo Nyakbom. Or Dr. Kobo, how about this Dr. Kobo? Obwebia Bia Ne Mekres Ninkana Abom Ngoya. We batana boko we bona ndoka na egwichi abuche ichi onya na taba na aru ona taba che wiru joka wesi no nwere medi bo ogu ogu emi e ko odu mma we we onya bu re medi am bo ogu an we bia na emme ke bu ko bata onge na agu bo aru shi oje mi abu dibia onya bo ogu ko me de ro ka ka we na bati an no me na na bu e o tundu ba ndi igbo ji acho we da na na eh o me na na bi we ndu na na e bo bula ji we ko bu o me na na diche Nog, o men at the form of Oka Naka. Kedundan and Melo and Banana, a Kedi Bekan, a Mongol in Kedi, or Bakana Pono Manana. Napo Mada don't so do Benaiva, Cabanya Layaka, 
oburo ogu kwa na agwo ima bu omenana omenana bu yodu na agworu ndi igbo Mr Peter Anekwesi an Aguleri traditionalist in his remark emphasized the importance of tradition and culture before influence and urged people to make efforts to connect to their roots while Mr Onyedika Kalu a herbalist from Ohafia hoped that culture is unique even with the existential challenge it faces and called for deep understanding of tradition and culture <laughs> Omena na bo ke me ye ka tugu si wecho ko ba ka goto ke gbu na mmadu ke me gide mmadu ibege ana wa wa ki begin wa nya ina otam na so no mena na bo ko ba ka oto nya bu zo ai si ana ta tugu ife bi fondo cha wa bi egu ai wa yo we nwo lu ka de ba ni ru alu nwe kali ana na igbo mana ta ata na ndi igbo anwete gbo ve na ta bazia Mrs. Onyebuchi Okoli, who is the leader of female adherents of Ngenagu deity, noted that the power of God is resident in the place, as prayers made are answered, saying there is no diabolical manipulation, but making prayers to the land and ancestral spirits for answers. Umada Ngenagu is the daughters of Ngenagu, women that are into tradition. Umudioka women that want to do the right thing, to follow the God of their forefathers. And if there's any problem, we run here. Ngenagu takes care of our physical healing, spiritual healing, and even economic healing. So economically, it takes care of us. Physically, it takes care of us. Spiritually, it takes care of us. Mr. Chuba Ngobu, a traditionalist from Umuarama village, Oka, pointed out that the power in nature is incomprehensible. Masquerades display, dances, music performances, and prayers to the deity featured prominently during the event. From Ngenagu Shirain, Umude Oka, Oka, it's been Kenetuku Chokodi for ABS News. The President of Abuja Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Chief Emeka Obegolu, says the only way to overcome the present economic challenges in Nigeria is by growing businesses to create exportable goods. Speaking during his visit to Oka Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Chief Obegolu noted that the federal government has a role to play in addressing present economic challenges facing the nation. Correspondent Joseph Ebocha has the details. He thanks Oka Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture and other counterparts on active government engagement and proffering alternative thinking to unfavorable economic policies in the overall interest of the masses, adding that the visit to Oka Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture will create networking opportunities for mutual support to members. So we came to express solidarity with Oka Chamber of Commerce and to assure them that um, Yes, this is a trying period for economy in Nigeria, but all chambers of commerce has to work hard to make sure that um, this period should be overcome. And the only way to overcome it is to encourage government at all levels to partner with chambers of commerce to support the business environment with policies that promote and incentivize businesses to outgrow these um, challenges. On the task of engaging government on economic policies, the president of Oka Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Engineer Chukwode Egemba, who said that the chamber is in touch with the Anambra state government on ways of improving businesses, called on Southeast governors to come together and improve businesses in the region with steady power supply and other incentives. Engineer Egemba, Express hope that the visit of the Abuja team to Oka Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture will begin to yield benefits in the nearest future. Today's interaction is really a beautiful one. Abuja Chamber of Commerce is the center, is the gateway to the nation. The Anambra State Government currently have a loan scheme that they are partnering with a Bank of Industry, which is for the benefit of the business community. So. We are not just asking government what they are doing. We want to be part of the process. We want to be part of the vision so that it will align with what is needed on the ground. 
one of the executive members of Oka Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, and an Ambra State Commissioner for Culture, Entertainment and Tourism, Mr. Don Onyenji, highlighted measures the Anambra State government has taken to improve businesses in the state. The government of Anambra State has been relating very well with the private sector. Remember we did uh, invest investment um, uh, summit. Uh -huh. That was in partnership with the private sector. And the governor of Anambra State has reached even out to our private sector indigenous in diaspora. All of these are connectivities, you know, efforts to connect. And that is even why today a lot of investors are coming into Anambra State. Former ministers Prince Adetokumbo Kayode, Dr. Aliyu Idihong, among others, joined the president of Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Chief Obegolu, on the visit. In Oka, Joseph Ebocha reporting for ABS News. The Commandant of the Nigeria Peace Corps, Adam Burstead, Mr. Innocent Okulu, has commended the House of Representatives for passing the Establishment Bill of the Corps again. The bill, which is sponsored by Benjamin Kalov, Deputy Speaker, Julius Ihobere, Majority Leader, and others, passed their reading a plenary in their state. Correspondent Chibuz Obidike filed in this report. The Green Chamber carried out the clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the bill on Wednesday after Julius Ihobere, the majority leader, presented a report. The bill dates back to the 8th National Assembly and was trailed by controversies at the time. The proposed law is titled A Bill for an Act to Establish Nigerian Peace Corps to Facilitate Peace, Volunteerism, Community Services, Neighborhood Watch, and Nation Building, and for Related Matters. Speaking in an interview, Mr. Okolo said the functions being given to Nigerian Peace Corps will also add value to the security architecture in the country, saying the continuous passage of the bill by House of Representatives shows that there is merit in the bill, capable of addressing the socio-economic challenges confronting Nigerian youths. According to him, the core, when established, will encourage volunteerism and get a good number of Nigerian youths engaged, as well as reduce crime in the society. The passage of uh, our bill for the second time uh, during this uh, 10th assembly in the House of Reps is uh, something everybody is happy for. Last year, October, the bill was passed, but because of some mis minor mistakes that were confirmed in the bill, the bill have to go back for corrections. Contributing, Mr. Samuel Adedayo and Mrs. Theodora Ifnanya revealed that if assented to by the president, the law would enable the organization to continue with its value-driven programs geared towards the socioeconomic developments of the youths. They expressed the hope while appraising the contributions of the Peace Corps of Nigeria in the general maintenance of discipline in schools and colleges across the country. Because of this bill, every, every, the youthful, every youth in, the, in our country will soon be engaged, most especially the members of Peace Corps that we have been there for years and be you know, working, trying to put this uh, together. We believe that, yes, we we'll become a federal government agency. One of the core mandates of the COP is neighborhood watch. So I believe that when this bill is finally signed into law, that you see most of the Peace Corps officers in every street, but they will be there to monitor and also gather information about some of those evil vices. Even in schools too, the case of cultism in schools will also be taken care of. Four people died and at least 21 were injured after a fire broke out during the night at a retirement home in Western Germany. The incident, first reported by the German news agency VPA, took place in Bad Hockau in northern Westphalia. A road of 46 other residents were evacuated and needed medical examination for possible injuries. According to the police, a firefighter and police officer were also injured and taken to a hospital. The Nigeria Olympics Committee says Nigeria will be represented by no fewer than 358 athletes in 25 sports at the 13th African Games. 
The public relations officer of NOC, Thoni Nizianya, stated this in a statement in Lagos. He said that the games will be held from March 8 to 23 in Accra, Kremasi, and Cape Coast. According to the breakdown, Team Taekwondo, Wrestling, and Karate have the highest number of individual sports athletes, each having 14 athletes, while Am Wrestling has 15 athletes. Weightlifting and Badminton both have a 12 member team, while Boxing has 11 pugilists, Judo 10, while Scrabble has 8 members. Remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS or any part of the world by liking our Facebook page. Follow at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow on X at ABS Radio TV and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. To end the news this evening, a recap of the main points. Governor Saludo has expressed sorrow over the death of Mr. Ibu. Anambra State House of Assembly has visited Uwimele community. House of Representatives has passed a bill to establish Nigeria Peace Corps. Fire outbreak in a retirement home in Germany has killed four people. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total total maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that ends the evening news at this time on ABS Television. Thanks for watching. I am Priska Onko. Good evening and have a wonderful night rest.